All right, testing some new audio equipment so I don't have to yell. You guys don't have to hear all kinds of weird sounds. I don't have to modify all my audio files constantly trying to fight background noise. So hopefully this is better. Sorry, I'm tired, but I wanted to bring this out because uh, I'm going to be changing things going forward. And again, I overthink everything, as you guys know, although some of you overthink things to a far more degree. I'm very tired. Some of you guys overthink things worse than I do. So don't even come at me. Anyways, I'm going to see if this audio turned out okay. All right. So the Elite Omnia is going to be up and coming. Pretty excited to shoot this bow. Took a really long time to get here in Canada. So, but now I have it. And, uh, yep. Good news. Very tired. <clears throat> anyway, so what I think I'm going to do, no, what I am going to do is the, um, the stability test. I did some stability tests with the PSE Levitate quite a while ago, but I was in like the 96, 97 range with the Levitate. And then with the Omen, which is supposed to be better because it's got full draw stability, which I don't think that the PSE Levitate didn't have full draw stability because the the shape of it and everything seems to be the same for the 2023 model, which now has full draw stability. I think they just weren't marketing it as such at that point in time uh, for the 2022 generation. So the uh, Omen does have a smaller brace site, but when I shot my Levitate, it had uh, this bar on it, the stabilizer, which was the AAE Mountain Series with uh, Easton uh, quick disconnect on it. So I think it's a 10 inch, 10 inch. Yeah. Yeah. 10 inch. I know what I'm shooting. Um, so I'm going to throw that on the Omen. I was going to shoot the Omen, uh, without stabilizer again and with stabilizer and then without stabilizer and then with stabilizer and then without stabilizer. And now you get where I'm going with this. I'm going to shoot the meat in each way five times. I'm going to alternate in between how I'm shooting it with that AAE 10 inch. Uh, I probably won't use it quick disconnect, but I might. Um, no, I won't. So you can tell that I'm making this up on the spot. Um, what if I should use a 12 inch or a 15 inch? 15 inch is overkill. I feel like 10 inch is the right thing to do. I'm gonna do the 10 inch. with three ounces on the front of it. And we're just going to see what that does for the stability score. Cause the basin, the stability score I did on there was with it's um, the CBE stuff that comes with it. I think the effect or something like that. This little guy here looks like a two ounce, maybe three ounce on the front. Actually, maybe I should just run this. Should I just use this? See what it does for stability. No, I'm going to use the 10 inch because it's kind of more what everybody's running, especially people that are most likely watching what I'm doing here. So we're going to do that. I'm not going to film it because uh, nobody will see it. And if my score sucks, I'll do a test run with a PSE Levitate, make sure that I can actually shoot right now because I am, like I said, very tired. <laughs> but that's what we're going to do. So hopefully... There's some stuff that I'm going to show you on the screen with the Mantis X8 data right after I'm done rambling here. I'm probably not even going to edit this. Sorry. Here's the Mantis X8. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. In my 
Yeah, that was weird. <clears throat> so I ended up just keeping the exact setup on the levitate. So the first two there, um, only thing I had on the Omen was the Easton quick disconnect. And then first two were with no stabilizer. Second two were with the AAE Mountain Series 10 inch on the Easton quick disconnect. I'm going to stop saying that now. Um, same results, same, same. And then again with the PSE levitate, first two shots without stabilizer, second two shots with stabilizer. Take this for what it's worth. I didn't see any difference. The levitate, I got my normal 96 on the last shot, but I don't know. I'm obviously, you've seen in the footage, I'm rushing my shots. I am tired, but that's interesting because I hear that you can shoot just as good without a stabilizer. Cool. As you can with a stabilizer. Cool. Until you start getting fatigued and then the stabilizer will outperform. But there's a whole bunch of things to that because the more weight you need on the bow, like the more weight you have on the bow, the more beneficial, more holding weight becomes, right? Makes sense. Got lots of weight out there wanting to fall down. You have no pounds holding it here, so it wants to sway around. But as soon as you have to hold back more pounds to hold up that extra weight on your bow arm, now you're locked in, loaded, right? Not moving. And then if you make it real light, you don't need as much holding weight. So all of that combined, are you going to get as tired when you're holding a light bow with light hold back or with light, uh, light let off, like 90% let off versus like a 65% or a 70% let off or 75 or 80 or whatever you want to use. I don't know. These are all things that you have to test on your own, but shock absorption, maybe it's there. I just seen a video from bowhunting.com or something like that. They, they tried out the trophy Ridge. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, they guarantee it dampens your bow vibration by 25%. So if vibration is your concern, there are products out there just for you. It's not your concern. I don't know if you want to add more weight to the front of your bow or not. I did watch a video a little while ago of a guy shooting, I think it was like 115 yards with and without stabilizer. Uh, and it made no difference in his shooting. So um, I think that if you're shooting at an X over and over and over again, and you've trained yourself with all of that weight, great. But I do wonder if you trained yourself without all of that weight shooting at an X, if it would truly make a difference. Um, brain games. Any of you see... The Brain Games on Netflix. There was an interesting episode there. It had a red carpet set up, just a red carpet, two gold poles down there, some nice red rope to the other two gold poles, not leading anywhere, just a red carpet. And they had one person that they paid to stand in the front of the line. They waited to see how long it took and if other people would join the line without knowing what the line is for. 
which it's for absolutely nothing. Sure enough, eventually a second person rolled in. And as soon as the second person rolled in, all of a sudden the floodgates were open and people were standing in that line. It filled right up. It filled right up for no reason. The line was for nothing. So I think we have a tendency as humans to not want to be different. Tim Gillingham is different. He does different things all the time. There's a few people that like to be different, but here we are. I think you just do what works best for you, what makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. And um, I'm going to shoot some more, obviously, when I'm not fatigued. Stabilizer, no stabilizer, to just see if I can actually pin down a difference. I'll probably wait until it's warm outside and I can shoot at some distance. I'll shoot at 100 yards on the range or whatever, and then I can just launch arrows all day without one, and then all day with one or, or whatever. And I could throw a 15 inch on there and try the, the bottom mount and all that stuff. But for now, I think as far as the stability test scores are concerned, we're just going to stick without, not even how the bow comes out of the package, because that Omnia has a little snubber down there and it adds weight to the bow. I'm probably going to end up taking everything off the bows and just shooting them. We, um, if we keep testing bows out of the box the way that you're not going to use them, um, like for vibration and stuff like that, it's going to create, well, we, we already see it. We're starting a trend. The trend has been set because they have these little nubs. I don't even know if you can see that, but the Elite here. Elite's got this little nub here now to absorb vibration, which is cool. But a lot of people take that off and then throw a stabilizer in there. So it's kind of useless. Um, but if you're testing it out of box the way that it ships, well, now... If we're comparing them all just out of the box, the way that they ship without anything on it, comparing vibration, well, everyone's going to start putting vibration dampeners on there out of the box because they have to in order to sell a bow because everyone's testing them for vibration out of the box. You know where I'm going with this? Should they include them? Yeah, for sure. It's not a bad thing. But hopefully, um, hopefully most of you can look beyond that whole thing. I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to go to bed so that I can do real tangible work in the morning. Thanks, guys, for listening to this rant. Really sorry that it's been so bad. I um, look forward to shooting this thing and checking it out from 60 and 70 pounds and doing a bow test on that guy. One other thing, I'll probably do this on a different video just because. So I did have a gentleman point out that my kinetic energy charts weren't as accurate as he would like. He mentioned that one foot per second on your readings can cause a dip in your kinetic energy chart from one arrow to the next. And he mentioned that one arrow to the next as you go up in weight, but everything else on the bow stays the same. Kinetic energy should never drop down. Now that's theory. I've seen a lot of things in my trade that challenge the theories that are made. In fact, you can't make sense of any of the things that are going on until you prove it. And then it's easy to look backwards and figure out what was going on. But theories can't explain it. Not simply. So keep in mind when you're, you're checking out those charts on the bow reviews that they do have some fluctuation. Not everything is in a perfectly controlled environment. I am the one shooting the bows. I'm not using a machine. I'm doing that on purpose. I'm not going to use a machine. I don't want to use a machine. I'm not going to calibrate my chronograph 
it is what it is. It's a comparison from bow to bow to bow. So as my chronograph, if it's out five feet per second or 20 or 50 feet per second, it doesn't really matter. As I gain data, it's going to be with the same chronograph and it's going to be tw between those bows. Like I've said a few times now, shooting the Omen at 57 pounds shoots the same speed as the Elite Basin at 70 pounds with the same arrow weight, same draw length. And you can see on the charts, I uh, just put a post up actually showing the two comparisons side by side, and it's dramatic. So if I'm one foot per second out, that's less than a percent. I don't care about a percentage. 1% is nothing to me. 2%, whatever. Just think about it this way. If a bow shoots 2% faster, you're going to go buy it. If the bow shoots 15% faster, you're going to go buy it. Getting more tangible. So if we're within 1%, I mean, is there a difference between 13% and 15% to you? If I'm 1% out on the bottom and 1% out on the top, does it really matter? You be the judge. Maybe it does. But I know in all of the things that I'm interested in, if there's not at least a 10% improvement, we typically end up overlooking it. Cell phones, prime example. Anyway, is what it is. I'm going to keep doing things the way that I'm doing things. If you want to watch it, that's great. I really appreciate it. I hope it does mean something to some of you. I know there's a lot of questions out there about cam options and, and different bows. And someone did mention that they would like my opinion on how the draw feels when I do heads up comparisons. So like when I compare the Omen at 57 pounds to the Elite Basin at 70 pounds, if I can compare the draws where they're actually a comparable bow as far as kinetic energy goes, because that's what we're doing with that tool, right? That, that tool is designed to shoot an arrow. So if the Omen feels better, at 57 pounds, then the Elite Basin feels at 70 pounds, then why, why go for the Elite Basin? Obviously they're in a different price bracket, but that's also a good thing because now you see what you're paying for, right? There's some tangible evidence that the more expensive bows are better. It's not just a feeling, it's not just a look it's not just because it's the best it's not just because we want to believe it there actually is something there that makes it perform better than a different bow if sound is a big thing to you i think a lot um, when it comes to sound there's so many variables that i can't really if you're shooting um, a 350 grain arrow because you're a speed guy and you don't like a loud bow, well, you're kind of doing it to yourself. If you're shooting like a 460 to 500 grain arrow, like something reasonable, if you have like a big kid draw length and stuff, then like you shouldn't be having the sound issues, right? They're not twanging. None of these bows are making any real different sound. None of them are like a target bow you hear out there going twang. They're all pretty muted. It's just a weird argument. It's just a weird thing that people are focusing on. Why not think about the looks of the bows? Like the elites, they're a beautiful looking bow. They have a really nice cam shape. Like, Great. I really like the PSE Levitate. I know not everyone likes it, boat paddle or whatever you're talking about. But as far as like the carbon goes, that is so appealing to me. The finish on it held up so good. It's such a nice shooting bow for me. It shoots better than any bow I've shot in a long time. And it's light. And some of you are going to hate me saying that, but I don't, it doesn't really matter. Am I a professional shooter? No. Can I shoot okay? Yeah. The bow makes me better. It's weird. It's true. Whatever. But 
So, and I really like the looks of the PSE Omen. I like the short brace height. XF30 looks cool in the case. It's not as appealing to me. It's a nice bow and I get why people like it and they're drawn to the short axle to axle. Some of the other bows look really stupid to me and I don't understand <laughs> why people, I'm a little bit vain. Looks are a big thing. I like color matching. I like the whole process of it. Like, do you drive a K car? Cause it's good on gas and it gets you from point A to point B. That's fine. Go ahead. I just don't want to drive a K car. I'd rather drive a beat up old pickup truck. Cause that's what I like. So you like what you like and that's all there is to it. But if there's something that's tangibly better and it doesn't look as nice, well then now I'm starting to think, but if they're all super comparable, then now I can start looking at things like color options and overall design options, like visual appeal and, um, yeah, but efficiency is a big one for me. Obviously, like I said, I'm okay with it being to the percent, but if we can start slinging 60 pound bows, shooting a 460 grain arrow at 300 feet per second. Now we're getting on to something there that is moving with a light draw. Pretty crazy. It's pretty cool. Anyways, I'm going to shut up now. I'm sure you guys would all appreciate that. I'll uh, be making an Omni review soon, so stay tuned. Thanks for hanging out. See you in the next one.